Hey guys, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you so much for the continuous support, suggestions, and phone calls. We have a great vlog for you today. All right, guys, we're on our way to a young female farmer. Um, you, know, you know these guys, the familiar faces. We have Bruce today, we have Jack around the back. Um, I'm glad they come with me because what they were bring to bring to the table today is getting this farmer in waste management using the vermi compost technique. Um, we're going to look at nutrition, look at our pasture program, just give her some advice to develop our goat farm. Um, we, do, you know, we support every farmer no matter where they are. Um, I know Bruce, man. Bruce, talk to the people then, Bruce. Yeah, man. So, as we were, um, Mr. Kali was saying, Mr. Kali allowed us to do some outreach, you know, try to facilitate this young farmer, get her up to speed with waste management, look at what she's doing. If you have any advice to give, we'll give her. She give us our thoughts and, 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 our, and the experience. So basically that, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> so at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take like an integrated approach for this farmer. So we're trying to do sustainable agriculture, as was made mention to um, waste management. So everything basically ties in with our operation. So we're taking a holistic approach. It's a cycle. Hey okay, guys. So follow the boat journey. I'm here with our youth farmer that we're exposing to you guys. I'm happy it's a female. We do have much females goat farmer that you know really want to come out and expose themselves. So give us an introduction, young miss. Hi, so I am Fianz Michael. I'm a graduate of CASE. I attained an associate in veterinary science and a bachelor's in animal science. And I came home and I decided that I love agriculture, I love livestock, but I love goat business. So I came home and I decided to start up my slotted floor. And I started now I have, so this is a size 16 by 14 and we're looking to extend at about uh, 14 by 14. So uh, currently in the goat house we have 18 animals but I partner with my mom so she has 10 and I have 8 animals in the house. Um, lovely. So, right. so it's a family business? Yes it is. Yes, um, your mother introduced you to farming before now, as in why you went to case? Was that your choice or that was some guidance from your parents? Well, they are farmers. So they do have pigs, chicken, rabbit. So I grew up seeing those small farming, but um, as you can see in the community, there's not much farmers that view farming as a business. They just view it as a hobby mm -hmm. or something that they just like and they just do. Are, you know they don't have any options so they just say let me take up farming but I view it as a business and a very profitable business so I came into it and I decided to do it as reputable as possible so that farmers in my community can look at what I'm doing and you know oh nice so you want okay so you plan to carry this goat business model within your community yes. um, I like that um, how did case really prepare for this can you did case really help you as in what you study as theory? Um, is it working out in this practical setting in the real world? Well, it is. It is to some extent. But I was one of those students who pushed myself out there to learn a lot. So I went to Denby and so case brought me to Denby. So at Denby, I got exposed to other farmers who are exposed and more experienced in the business. As a female in agriculture, are there any challenges or are there any um, advantages you can say you, you want to share with, with everybody? Advantages? Mm -hmm. Not much. Not much, okay. Disadvantages? Um, persons hardly listen to me. So I have to do it and then they'll see the results and then they can replicate it. But just telling them just like that, they don't really listen as much um, that, as that, I'd that, want them to. That, that, that's... that's, that's I think that's so coincidental. I was talking to a female farmer today and she was saying the same exact thing that, you know, when she talked to her workers, they call her miserable. Yeah. But when she said her brother come, is either them say, boy, boss, you're rough, or they listen to him. So yeah. I see what you're saying. Um, so guys, we have to respect our, 
are women leaders. Um, they, it's, it's what you're doing. Um, you want to tell us your age? I'm 21. So you're a 21 year old setting up our own goat operation here. Um, so we want a quick tour with you. I'm um, sure some of your animals show us how you, you feed them, your best practice that you learn and doing here. And you know, we have you know, we have Cardi for your technical support and myself. You know, we look at your your prepared uh, your vermi your, your vermicompost bin for us. Oh, um nice. we'd love to see that. So so guide us and show us what you're doing and show you know your your community how they should replicate their goat business. <laughs> This is what we currently are working with. Um, so we started out with just a box and the slotted floor and then when I came home I decided that we needed some troughs so I went ahead and designed a little construction thing. Mm -hmm. So I just designed this and fixed it up and thing. Uh, we did these ones too. So what do you use these separations for? These are for the kids. Okay. Yeah. Kids and wieners that we don't want the book messing around with that okay. as yet. And for those animals that are fighting too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have our automatic drinkers. Oh, nice. Yeah. I got these from Amazon. You bought them on Amazon? Really? Yeah. And they're working fine for you? No problems as yet? Um, they're dripping. They're, that one is dripping. I don't know if... I'm having dust particles going into them, so I'm looking into setting up a filter system somewhere there mm -hmm. to prevent dust from going in because it drips on and off. So you okay. get it dripping this moment, and next moment it's not dripping anymore. Okay. So I think maybe dust is getting into it. Mm, yeah. I see, I see. So, uh, yeah, how you build this? Was it you, you, you oversee somebody who would do it? Who who do this construction okay it's pretty neat i i can tell you it's really nice uh, so my stepdad he's a soldier and he teaches construction in the army these are all scrap boards okay for your flooring cut, yeah mm. so we cut them up neatly and place them so you can notice if if i were to buy these materials um it would have been way more expensive because you can see some six by four some two before you can see some thick pieces of lumber so if if I were to go the cheaper method, and if I had to buy them, I would buy the one by three and those stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. So then we got the pallets and we put them along the sides. Um, and that's that's oh, mostly yeah. it. What do you do your roofing? Um, the roofing are also things that we got from. Okay, so just from persons. So most of this, most of the pen itself is just um wood that we got. You can see some post there that we're cutting the bushes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. so we utilize those as well and you can see we're going to utilize a lot of them on this, on this side. side so what you plan to do with this area this area um so on either side i'm going to build it the same mm -hmm. so on either side is going to be the breeding pen and kidding pen and kidding pen right well not necessarily kidding pen but for the wieners and their moms so in these pens, we're going to have the kids basically just bond with their moms for a while before we bring them out into the larger area. So how, how far you plan to expand this operation? Like how many animals you really want to have up here? Um, currently, I'm looking to have 50 animals. 50. Really what I want, I don't want to work for anyone. So I want to build this so it can sustain me and my family. Great, great. That's a good plan. Um, so tell us now about your feeding. Um, your area look lush, so I don't think you have a, a grass problem up here. I don't have a grass problem, I have a grass quality problem. Okay, nice. Yes. Nice, so how you plan to improve that or what strategies you're putting in place to you know, improve your, your grass quality or how you feed them? So um, we have mostly brachyra in this area. Okay. But we have a lot of farmers that don't really understand the worm program. Mm -hmm. So they just carry the animals in there and they just tie them anywhere. So when I bring my animals out there afterwards, they pick up the worms. So what I decided to do is not just move away from Brachyra, 
but to move away from those pastures instead. Okay. So I built pastures on my myself. Nice. And I used Mombasa African star and brachiera. Oh excellent, excellent. Um so which are these three grasses in name you think doing better in your area? I think the brachiera the Mombasa will do very well. Okay. Because it has been. I've gotten so I planted them about four months ago and I got one crop already from them. Nice. And it did really well. Lovely. Like the leaves are really broad. Yes. The stem yes. to leaf ratio. Yes, yes. See smart girl. That's, that's, that's one of the best parameters, guys, to when you're looking at grass, is that stem to leaf ratio. Um, majority of our species, we hope we have more leaf, that's where the nutrients okay, is. Yeah. African star is more stem, Pangola is more stem, so it's a high fiber. So, guys, case working on the students. Oh, yeah, show us your pastures, please. Um, I, I saw your TikTok. Um, what's your TikTok name? Um, it's F Michael three nine five five. Guys, or go and check it out. Type my name. Um, give him a name again. I want him to see it. It's... Bayan Michael. Guys, check out our TikTok. Our thing loud. <laughs> um, as she should do in our Mombasa plot. I'm excited to see it. Um, she told me that she harvested some. Yeah. So we just wanted us, you know, look at the area, how she planted, it, how you planted. it. Why tell us that? Um, I sure you never do any tractor work. No. So I want you to kind of tell us how you got the seeds in the ground. And I think you're doing some transplanting, just give us a quick guide on that and show us some animals. Let us walk the pasture, right, guys? Mm -hmm. So, guys, you should point out the uh, vermicose compost bin, vermicompost bin that she built under, under Cardi Guidance, Bruce and Jacko. Um, tell her how to do it, and she's using bamboo on the side. So, we're excited to, to start this with her later. You guys will see us, you know, putting in some manure and adding the worms. Um, let's go, let's go, guys. This is exciting. So, so, so these are some of your, your animals, Miss Miss Michael. Yes, they are. And okay, guys. This, this is not an established pasture. It's supposed to be an African star pasture, mm -hmm. but um, based on the rain season and because I'm kind of using the rain to germinate my grass, so I have to wait until um, September, October. Okay, anyways. get more rains. Yeah. So, guys, see she following the. She, she climb it smart. Yeah. She climb it smart. You know, she look at the weather forecast before she do our planting. Um, a lot of us not doing that. We just get seeds and we just show it. <laughs> so follow, follow Miss Michael, man. She, she, she following the theory and making it practical. Um, yeah, show us some more. Show us some of your, your plots. So nice with the new down there on here, sir. Eight months, nice, 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 young miss, nice. So okay, it's two plots you have. Yeah. But I'm combating weeds down there. Mm -hmm. So one of my biggest issues with um, building my Mumbasa pastures especially was combating nut grass. Oh nut grass, yes, it's yeah. a big problem. Yeah, so what I did was I used two different planting methods, mm -hmm. first of all. So I did broadcasting on that side down there. So you can see I still have weeds in it because it's hard to combat the weeds when I just broadcast them. Mm -hmm. But up here, I planted them in patches. So I dug the holes about three feet or so apart. Mm -hmm. And then I just spring, I pinch some seeds and sprinkle them. I waste a lot of seeds. I waste a lot of seeds. But I just pinch and sprinkle the seeds in each hole. And then I just sprinkle some dirt over it. And we could say it was like a germination result or re using rainfall, right? You are doing hand watering to improve the germination of the I, seeds. I didn't do hand watering, so I struggle with that, with the germination. But um, based on how I planted them, I was able to pull from patches mm -hmm. and pull them apart and spread them out. So that's what I've been doing currently. So you can see somewhere I just pull up probably about a week ago oh when you plant this okay so you yeah. pull up this one and just transplant it here right. to fill the gaps okay but go down to your broadcast because down there looking like down there looking like bush <laughs> i'm sure when they when they grow heavy they start kill out some of the weeds yeah seven feet seven feet yeah i know i went to chew juice and it was over my head i am yeah. six three so so guys she's doing her little transplanting she's putting her mumbas so she's splitting them up putting them in patches um, I like it. 
um, was the goats who keep this down or is yes, you cut it? they keep jumping over. Oh, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so she have two plots, guys. This one just says she broadcast. Um, this one she did early to digging and transplanting methods. So, you know, in time, I'm sure she'll send me a good video when it grow up again. TikTok. Yes, or we can yeah, go on our TikTok. I'm sure you'll see it, because, boy, <laughs> she... She's showing the world what she's doing. Um, so yeah, see Mombasa here. I like it. You want to stand up beside it so I can see how tall it is. Uh, you're pretty short. How tall are you? Uh, about 5'3 or 5'4. Five 5'3 five and it's overhead guys. So see it there. This is how it looks when it's germinating. And this Michael shows. You know, that you want to look for this. You know that's your, your Mombasa there growing. As I said, very similar to guinea grass. It's a guinea grass. It's a panicum. Basically telling her based on the total area that she has to work with, there's an abundance in space so you can go and plant legumes you know, shrubs mm -hmm. or trees along the perimeter fences mm -hmm. so utilizing every acre that you yeah. have. Pleurisidia, river tambourine, mulberry, which is really high in mm -hmm. protein as well. Mm -hmm. so I agree. So you know that there. I have those in here, right? Oh, you have it in here? <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I can see some mulberry cuttings there I have to plant. Right? Oh, yes, along yes, I see them there. Mm -hmm. And you can see some quick stick there. That you put into the fence and already. Yeah. So guys, see she she know her thing. <laughs> you know, she's doing her thing. And over there is your plot too? Yeah, so that's Brachera. Oh, I see a Brachera over there. I see. Alright, thank you, Miss Michael, so much. Yeah, yeah. We, we did a course at that at case. I remember yeah, doing integrated yeah. management system or something like that as a course. It have really you have your, you have your passes and you have your passes, you have to have your quick stick. And you protein here and there. Yeah, yeah. And a feed delivery system you use, as in you do cotton carry or you do grazing? So I do grazing, but since I just planted the Mombasas, what I was trying to do is ensure that they have good um, rooting systems. Well first. said. So what I did was I cut and carry it first. The mm -hmm. first crop of it was cut and carry. So now that they're catching the roots properly, I'm going to have the animals coming and grazing. So. Okay, and, and grazing is a better system for you based on yeah. what you have access to. Yeah, and based on um, labor costs. Yes, okay, so you drop your labor costs by just doing a grazing. Right. Nice, okay. smart girl. Smart. Um, so, what you do? What you do with the animals? You... So, breeding stock, since my community doesn't have um, any graded animals or any. Bigger breed animals, they just have natives in the community. So I'm going to do breeding stock, but my aim is meat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. So oh, you would be the source of the, you would be the plug for quality stock in, in yeah. your area. Um, good plan. Good plan, young miss. Alright, so basically we are going to help Miss Faye and Michael today in establishing her very own vermicomposting site. Great job guys, great job. So right now what we're going to do, we're going to go underneath the pen, which was really, 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 really constructed properly. So she has our slatted floor system that allows the feces to pass in between the cracks. So there is also that. Now we have our shovel, we're going to use our shovel with the assistance of a bucket to move the, the feces from underneath the pen to the vermicompost. Uh, let me ask you guys now, how was this constructed properly? Would you change anything on this on this design? Or you think it's just ideal for the moment and you can improve it? Well, let me first say commendation to Miss Michael for her construction. Well, ideally, what, do you, what you need is a more secure site. Mm -hmm. The base is properly lined with concrete which will prevent the worms from escaping but over time we recommend that she change the sides to a concrete structure okay okay right so that will prevent the worms or the organic matter along with moisture to escape, escape. Readily, uh, easily. i see what you're saying um she had made mention that for now this is what she have as mm -hmm. she's using her, her current resources so we recommended yes she can to start the process to feel it out have an idea Yes, you can work with it, but as time goes by, it's best to change it out. Okay, guys, so see what you do. Um, bamboo, so as Mr. Bruce said, he will allow her to change the sides because the worms might escape. 
nice concrete flooring. Don't have to be nothing too bossy. Again, to not make the worms and the, the, the nutrients, right, Mr. Bruce, yes. from escaping. And as I say, it's simple. Um, to me, to me, we can do some measurement to see what kind of volumes. And then this byproduct that she'll be producing, um, what is, would be your recommendation for it? Well, as she have our pastures them, okay. right? So she can use that as an integrated pro procedure. I advise that she can use it to fertilize her pastures. Or if there are customers around here who deal with plants, I will sell and produce botanical plants. She can even sell. Ah, I see. Yeah. I see. So, so it's an additional income stream yes. also. So there's a market for, for vermicompost. All right, yeah. guys. So we're going to start now. All right, let's go go to work, guys. We're going to dig up some manure. Keep you and we keep you posted when we start doing the procedure. They walk us through it. So we'll see Bruce ready. So guys, you see the benefit of the slotted floor. A lot of people say, why we need slotted floor in Jamaica? Ultimately, outside of keeping the animals off the ground is about proper waste management. Um, if we don't practice something like this, we'll end up in environmental problems later down. So again, we're showing you how to complete the process. Yes, we want the waste in one area. But now we're going to show you how you can treat this solid waste, turn it into something beneficial. Um, yeah, so it's a zero waste system. And Bruce said, and Jacko, if you're doing botanical gardening, this is perfect for you. Um, so we're going to scoop up some now and start filling the bin. Why are you guys leveling this off now? Any specific reason? Basically, the, the worm ratio is very important along with the amount of manure. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have an excess amount of manure or thickness where in which it probably suffocates. For example, if there's excessive rainfall, you know, that's going to lead to poor drainage. Oh. We're going to use two inch okay. based on the design of the model. Yes. Right, so with the amount of worms that we brought along with what she have available to her in terms of manure, that's what we're going to use. And this, and this is just a startup, it's just to kind of inoculate the, the, the manure with the worms. So it's basically a trial, trial and error phase for her, because it will be her first time, so she can learn as much as she can. So whenever she wants to take it to another level, you know, she has had the, um, the knowledge prior to developing the program. Right, I'm here and I'm pretty hot. Would you make any recommendations regarding how you position your vermicompost being hot? Sun, there's not much of an issue with it. But what we recommend is that you have a serum cloth covering it. Okay. So now the serum cloth will provide as a barrier from, from erosion, slash erosion when there is rainfall and also important prevents the birds from coming in and scratching. Oh yeah, taking up your worms. Yes. yes, yes, so true. Right. So in terms of management, moisture is very important. So mm -hmm. right now the moisture content is very low. Oh, so you want the moisture to be more in for example, it should replicate a damp sponge, mm -hmm. for example, when you have squeeze a sponge and you, there's no water coming out. So that is the recommended moisture. Oh, so, so you're going to add water to yes, this? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. All right. Sounds good, guys. Two inches thick. Ready now. So I already brought some, brought some worms for Miss Michael. You're not afraid of worms, Miss Michael? No. So basically this process involves the use of worms, specifically the California red wrigglers, right? So these worms are very efficient in terms of breaking down the manure. So it's their casting which is used and is known as vermicompost. Okay. Right, so it's their waste that, they, that, are, that has been released from the manure when they feed on it. That is what you get as a byproduct, the end product, the material. So, no, so normally people would say these are or why they can't use earthworms. Yes, you can use earthworms to break down manure, yes, but these are more efficient. Okay. They break them down faster. The science says 18 to 21 days, but that is on a commercial level. Mm -hmm. For example, here in Jamaica or here at our farm in Samoto, what we normally recommend is the time is about six to eight weeks, right, with all favorable conditions that involve your management practices such as your turning, your irrigating, right, and your topping up and adding worms. Perfect. All right, so we're in this now you're going to put these worms. Um, you see, you can put at the end so they can migrate across, right? That's what you guys are saying. So in most cases, what we try, try to do 
we have a perfect equilibrium as it relates to the dispersion of these earthworms within the bin. So what we kind of do, we don't necessarily put them one spot and allow them to migrate. We want to ensure that they are equally dispersed through. Okay, the okay, right? so okay. So you have every crevice and corner. Having some form of worms. Bin, having some worms, you know. And something that we forgot to mention to you guys is that the California red regular worms, one of the major reasons why these worms are used for this purpose is due to the fact that they are built with the innate ability meaning able to withstand certain weather conditions oh, so okay. these these worms basically thrive within 45 to 75 degrees celsius as it relates to the heat and temperature and as we know it jamaica on a whole has um a change in climate so therefore these worms are best suited for this purpose understood So this is low quad. It's low one quad. of my favorite. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really a, nice. You have a vibe. Yeah. It's really nice. It, it's like it have a fresh mango taste yeah. with cantaloupe. Yeah. Yeah, this bad. Where name again? Low quad. Low quad. So the first night, this guys. Low quad. <laughs> 